Others will tell you to be saved is to dress well. To be saved is to stop smoking. To be saved is to be a good person. To be saved is to pray every day. But brothers and sisters, even without referring to the scriptures, the word saved comes from the word saved. It's an action. And only a powerful personality, a powerful subject, a powerful power can save you where you are helpless. Say for example, if I was in my house and my house was on fire, at that point in time I cannot deliver myself. I am in risk of dying. What will happen unto me? I'll begin screaming, calling for help. And whoever will come and secure me out of that trouble will be called my savior with regards to that situation. This man is asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? What is the requirement? The must requirement that I'm supposed to do so that I never go to hell. So if you are hearing me right, this is the point. This is a man who is asking a question to Paul and Silas because he does not want to go to hell because of his sins. Number one, in that question, he realizes that he's in danger of going to hell. You know when you begin to ask someone, what must I do to, to be saved? What must I do to go to heaven? It begins from you being informed that, hey, you are in danger. The probability, the chances of you going to hell are high. Any sin that you have ever committed in your life is enough to take you to hell. It's not about a big sin. It's not about a small sin. No. Any sin that you've ever committed in your life and you are still in that condition, you have not come to a point of asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? You have not come to a point of agreeing to speak to our soul winners, agreeing to speak to Pastor Paul, agreeing to look out for the truth. That sin is just enough to take By the way of introduction, I am Pastor Paul from a, a Baptist church known as Faithful Lord Christ Baptist Church. This is Emily, my wife. And so uh, I wish to know your name, even one. Benedict. Benedict. Okay. So Benedict, we are just we just want to know if you are a Christian or not. Christian. You're a Christian. Oh, it's nice to know. You go to church? Yeah. Which one? In PAG. Okay. Pentecostal assemblies. assemblies of God. Okay. Going to church is important. But before I get to that point, do you believe that all Christians, all, will go to heaven? <laughs> you don't believe that all Christians will go to heaven? Why do you think all Christians will not go to heaven? Oh, sir. No, no, it is maybe, maybe you are just a Christianity, so yes, to differentiate me from Muslim. All right. Like, but come on, you are two Christians. Yes. So, by your definition, who is a true Christian? The one who does what? Does the will of God. The will of God. What is the will of God? Ah. 
the Ten Commandments. Okay, fine. So, you are telling me, if a Christian keeps the Ten Commandments, will go to heaven. So let me now come back to you. With keeping the commandments, are you a hundred percent for sure? Now you as a person, when you die, will go to heaven. A hundred percent for sure. You are not a hundred percent for sure. Oh, perfect. So, in other words, you find struggle in keeping them. Okay. So, with not keeping it a hundred percent, that means then you are not sure if you will go or will not go, isn't it? Okay, fine. Now, I am here to help. That's the reason why I've been asking you all these questions. I am here to help you. And if you'll be convinced by what I'm going to show you here, then you should have no trouble doing what the Bible says. Because I'm here to show you that going to heaven is very easy. You don't need to struggle to go to heaven. I know preachers preach saying that the journey to heaven is so difficult. But I'm here to tell you that going to heaven is very easy and God only requires you to do one thing, one time, not every day. Because keeping the commandments is a daily thing, isn't it? And therefore you find even if you try to keep today, tomorrow you're failing. Even if you try to keep this hour, the next second, you are failing. Okay? Alright. Let me try and show you, starting out from the scripture that proves unto you that not everyone is going to heaven because you spoke of the command, uh, doing the will of the Father. So I'll be showing you what the will of the Father is, but let me begin out by showing you what the Bible speaks of in Matthew 7, 21. Matthew 7, 21, this is Jesus speaking by himself. He says, <coughs> Matthew 7, 21, he says, not everyone that saith, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is saying, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord. You know, today we live in a, an environment where you'll end up thinking that everybody is a Christian. Because everywhere you hear, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. On Sundays, Saturdays, Fridays, Keshas, and what have you. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. You remember you spoke of the will? Now, see, Jesus is saying, unless you do the will of his Father, which is in heaven, you will not go to heaven. Now, if I'm not wrong, unto you, your understanding is that the will of the Father is the commandments. Okay? So, I'll show you what the will of the Father is, biblically speaking. But then he gives an example or a picture of people that trust in the things they do, good things, hoping that they will go to heaven, then they miss out. Remember also you spoke of people who are hiding themselves in Christianity, and your reasoning was hiding may be breaking the commandments or doing funny things. But here we have a picture of people that are doing good things in the name of the Lord, verses 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? To prophesy is to preach. So these are telling Jesus, hey, can't you see that we preached using your name? And in thy name have cast out devils. So they use the name of Jesus to rebuke demons. It's something that you see on our televisions every day. In the name of Jesus. So these people are, are, are building their faith on that. That since we rebuke demons using your name, since we preached in your name, and look here, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Wonderful works are good works. So they are telling Jesus, look at how we preached using your name. Look at how we rebuked demons using your name. Look at how we did good things in your name. Either way, we sang in church. We gave money in church. We were faithful tithers in church using your name. What is the response of Jesus Christ? Look down to verse 23. The Bible says, And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. So these men and women did all these things in the name of the Lord. But Jesus is telling them, Get away from me. I never knew you. Okay? So here is the problem. They did not do the will of the Father. Okay? Now if you consider these actions, you would think that these people are keeping the law. Right? But then, Jesus is telling them, I never knew you. So we're going to investigate the scriptures and seek to understand what is the will of the Father. Alright? So let me take you right the scriptures that prove unto you that the will of the Father is not to keep the commandments. John 6.40 John 6.40, the Bible says, John 6.40, Jesus again explaining the will in Matthew 7, 
and this is the will of him that sent me so it's like revealing everything making everything plain to you and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and i will raise him up in the last day so what is the will of the father brother here you see the son you do what you believe isn't it has he said the will of the father is to keep the commandments no okay so if we were to gauge ourselves via the scriptures you see that you are wrong on this isn't it because for you the will of the father is to keep the commandments for jesus the will of the father is to see jesus and believe in him john uh, acts chapter 4 verses 12 before i get i want to prove unto you that the commandments don't save from the scriptures because that is where you, your trouble is acts 12 uh, acts chapter 4 verses 12 Acts chapter 4 verses 12. <coughs> Acts chapter 4. <coughs> Let me show you the Bible says in Acts chapter 4. Let me read from verses 10. Be it known unto you all. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you all. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Mark this verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved so the only name that will save you is the name of jesus and he says no other way isn't it so if you read this will you still believe that the commandments can save you only the name of jesus isn't it now there are two ways to go to heaven there are two roads to go to heaven it's up to you to choose one let me show you galatians chapter 2 Galatians chapter 2 <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 the Bible says knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law the works of the law are the commandments okay so Paul is saying we knowing that a man is not justified accepted by God by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ mark that and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified so two things have been highlighted here the faith of Christ and the works of the law so Paul is saying the apostle is saying hey we know that we've been justified by the faith of christ and not by the works of the law so we have the road of the law and the road of the faith in jesus christ you can never walk on two roads and reach where you want to go right you are either saying i want to walk on the road of having faith on jesus in jesus christ so that i reach heaven or you are either saying i want to keep the law but as you keep the law as you keep the commandments you better know that he says for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified god will never accept you god will never allow you to get into heaven for keeping the law it is not to say that the commandments are bad we are not saying that the commandments are wicked no the bible says the commandments of god are holy right but then once the introduction of the commandments came unto our conscience then we discovered that we are sinners because you know the commandments are always telling you do this don't do this do this don't do this and humanly speaking what we are told not to do that's what we go doing isn't it even for a child if you told your child don't touch there your child will go touch there so that's how we are so the bible again further proves my brother that if you trust in the commandments to go to heaven you are under a curse you are a cursed person chapter 3 verses 10 the bible says for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse many people who believe that the law will save them the bible says they are cursed why 
for it is written cast is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them why are they under a curse they are breaking it they believe it will take them to heaven but then they are breaking it that's why you told me the will of God is to do the commandments but when I ask you are you doing it perfectly you say no the problem is here that's where the curse is coming in because if you believe that it is what will take you to heaven you should be keeping it perfectly without breaking even a dot and it's not you alone humanly speaking no one keeps the law perfectly isn't it and that's why other people come to a point of saying we are human beings so the bible says verse 11 but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is evident for the just shall live by faith no one is going to be justified by the law in the sight of god only the just shall live by faith which faith the faith of, of christ jesus because remember i told you there are two roads to go to heaven isn't it so those who are walking on the road of, of having faith in jesus the bible says those are the ones who are going to live the bible says and the law is not of faith but the man that doeth them shall live in them so never say you have faith will reach in heaven if you are keeping the law because you have to be working on that law every day it's a process if it's about the law the bible says was studying christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree god is telling you brother you have to know that that curse the curse that comes because of you not keeping the law jesus christ took it away so if jesus christ has taken that curse on your behalf do you still need to focus on the law you don't need to focus on the law and that's why chapter 2 verses 21 the bible says i do not frustrate the grace of god for if righteousness come by the law then christ is dead in vain anyone who believes that he has to keep the law to go to heaven in other words he's saying jesus did not die for me but anyone who believes that jesus died for me that person is saying the law cannot save me they can never be two things at once so even as this gospel is coming unto you you have a choice to make are you the one saying the death of jesus christ is vain for you or are you the one saying i want to change my mind now and believe that jesus christ did everything for me all right so are you convinced up to this point in time that the lord cannot save you are you convinced up to this time that the will of the father is not to keep the commandments but believe on jesus christ okay so if you if you, if now you believe that let me now be very clear to show you what you are supposed to do one time and go to heaven because now we have now proven unto you that the law cannot save you okay so we go to Acts 16 <coughs> that one in Acts 16 this is the story of Paul and Silas while in jail and while in jail the soldier that was guarding them was desperate he wanted to know what he must do to go to heaven and he comes to a point whereby he asked them a question the bible says and brought them out the soldier brought paul and silas out and said sirs what must i do to be saved to be saved is to go to heaven now i know that there's a problem in our society when it comes to the word saved because i've asked many people what they understand by the word saved others tell me to be saved is to go to church to be saved is to dress well i don't know about you what do you understand by the word saved accepting jesus accepting jesus so the meaning of the word saved is to be rescued isn't it it comes from the word save so if i was to tell you save me it means i'm in danger i'm facing a threat so asking you to save me it means you are the only one who has the power to save me out of that situation and i believe that you are the one who will save me so when this guy is asking paul and silas what must i do to be saved this guy knows that i'm in danger of going to hell because the dangerous place that you don't want to go after this life is hell because the bible says there's fire in hell people are on chains in hell worms are there eating up people and people have no comfort there in hell so this guy knows very well if i do not know what to do if i'm not going to do what i must do to go to heaven then i'll go to hell so that's why he believes paul and silas know the truth 
he believes Paul and Silas are the custodian of truth. So he's asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? To go to heaven and never go to hell. What was the answer? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. I want you to understand something concerning this story. This man here, before he came to this point of asking Paul and Silas about his salvation, he wanted to commit suicide. Because the Bible says this, And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself. So he wanted to commit suicide, isn't it? Supposing that the prisoners had been fled away. So at one point he thought that maybe the prisoners have gone away and then the solution, the thing he wanted to do is to kill himself. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm for we are all here. Now the reason why I've taken you back to this story is that Imagine these guys asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? And Paul is not speaking anything concerning him committing suicide. Because if it was a preacher today, he would have told this guy, now that you have not committed suicide, you'll go to heaven. Or if you commit suicide, you'll go to heaven. No, he didn't speak about committing suicide. He just spoke about believing what? Jesus Christ. So the must thing that you have to do to go to heaven is what, brother? Believe on who? Jesus Christ. John 3.16. John 3.16 yeah. I want to compare scripture with scripture so that we are clear on this I don't want to leave you with any doubt for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth does not say whosoever goes to church that said whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life so you believe on Jesus you will never perish that means you will never go to hell right you believe on Jesus will have everlasting life. I want to bring you home and investigate this scripture here. And let's stand true to this scripture. This scripture is saying, if you believe on Jesus Christ, you will never go to hell. Do you believe that? That if you believe on Jesus Christ, you will have everlasting life. Right? So keep note of this. No sin is mentioned here. It does not say, if you believe on Jesus Christ and stop your sins. It does not say that. That's just said, believe on Jesus Christ, no perishing, but have everlasting life. Okay? Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. You believe on Jesus Christ, no condemnation. That means God will never take you to hell. What God is looking at, did you believe in my son? You believe in him, the Bible says, no going to hell, no being condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Bible is very clear, brother, that you say, I don't want to believe. Maybe say, I want to continue keeping the commandments. Maybe say, I want to continue doing what my church taught me. The Bible says, God condemns you immediately. So, the judgment of God on whether one is going to hell or heaven is not made when he or she dies. It's made that moment when he says, I don't want to believe on Jesus Christ. I want to keep doing what I was taught. All right? Verse 36, he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. You believe on the Son, Jesus Christ, you get everlasting life immediately. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. John 6, uh, 47, let me show you again. Concerning believing, 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 believing. John 6, 47. The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me has everlasting life. Now, if you have everlasting life, will that life ever end? It will never end. Okay? Now, we spoke of the commandments. I just want to be clear and understand that there's nothing again in your mind which is going to hinder you see the clarity of the gospel here. Do you believe that one has to repent of his or her sins to go to heaven? <laughs> but you have to believe in Christ first. Okay. So according you have to believe in Christ first then repent of your sins. So so far, have we seen the Bible saying believe plus something or minus something or just believe? Just believe. Just believe. So if you have a plus, either a preacher is adding on it or you. But according to the Bible, it's just believe, isn't it? Okay, let me prove unto you that the Bible never teaches that you have to repent of your sins to go to heaven. I have handled the commandment issue. Now I want to show you the repent of your sin issue. Matthew chapter 3. Because people preach saying that you have to repent of your sins to go to heaven, but yet the Bible never says that. Matthew chapter 3. 
Matthew chapter 3 chapter 3 verses 1 the Bible says in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea look down to us two, and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand did he say repent of your sins just said what repent okay so what is repent to you if I was to ask you the meaning of the word repent would you say forgiveness or what forgiveness okay I'll let you know what repent means okay so here John is preaching saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand he is not saying repent of your sins so I don't know who adds on repent of your sins it's not God it is another voice from somewhere okay mark 1 4 mark chapter 1 4 says what now after that john was put in prison jesus himself jesus came into galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of god verses 15 and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand mark this repent ye are you seeing anything like repent of your sins somewhere <laughs> repent ye and believe the gospel so john preached repent ye jesus preaches repent ye there's no mention of repent of your sins okay acts chapter 3 verse 17 let's go forward and see what other apostles preach 317 chapter 3 verse 17 says what says chapter 3 verse 17 <clears throat> repent ye therefore let me I begin from uh, this is Peter preaching this is Peter preaching then he comes to a point of proving to these people that they killed Jesus Christ verse 15 but you denied the Holy One the, and the just and decided a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God has raised from the dead whereof we are witness and his name and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know yeah the faith which is by him has given him the fit soundness in the presence of you all now verse 17 and now brethren i would that through ignorance you did it as also your fathers but those things which god beforehand showed by the mouth of his old prophets that christ should suffer has he he has so fulfilled repent ye therefore no repent of sin repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord so what is he telling them repent what are they repenting from their ignorance because it was out of their ignorance they killed jesus now he's telling them repent and be converted he's not telling them repent of your sins do you understand okay so up to that point in time the word repent means to turn the word repent means to change your mind it's like when i say i'm repenting from entering in here that means i'm not gonna enter here so when they say repent of your sins you know they're telling you turn from all your sins to be saved now nobody turns from all his sins to be saved that means even if you say i repented of my sins you will still commit those sins tomorrow and you know to prove unto you that god himself who never sinned and his sin is not closer to god repented so according to your definition are you trying to say god asked for forgiveness <laughs> let me show you from the scriptures exodus exodus 32 exodus 32 let me just show you the bible proving the fact that god repented and then we'll be asking ourselves from what so the bible says and the lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people so what did god repent from the evil which he was planning to bring unto the people so he changed his mind he turned on it he was not going to do it so the meaning of the word repent means to change your mind to turn okay so the bible never said we have to turn from our sins to be saved what did the bible say we should do repent isn't it okay so that means if jesus is preaching repent ye and believe the gospel he's saying change your mind and believe the gospel so if you believe in other uh, god or in another religion change your mind and believe the gospel that preaches salvation by faith alone okay so i'm almost done 
the question to you is that what must one do to be saved? To believe. Believe who? In Jesus Christ. Okay. Now here, after you've believed, will you ever go to hell? After you have believed, will you ever go to hell? <laughs> okay. After you have believed, you still go to hell. Or what are you saying? After you have believed on Jesus Christ, will you still go to hell? You have everlasting life. Okay. So after you have believed and you have an everlasting life, will you ever go to hell? Yes. You'll still go to hell. Why? Because it's the will of God. Okay, maybe you're not understanding my question. I'm saying, look, you have believed on Jesus Christ. You have been given everlasting life, okay? Will you ever go, will you still go to hell or will you will still go to heaven? Will go to heaven. Heaven. So that means after you believe on Jesus Christ, you will never go to hell. Okay? Do you believe so? Okay. So what if you believe today, for example, in your situation, what if you believe today and tomorrow you commit sin? Will you still go to heaven or hell? Heaven. Heaven. Even if you commit sin. Okay. That's good. Because I wanted to show you the fact that we believers, after we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no chance of us going to hell even if we sin. But should we continue sinning, God will chastise us. God will punish us. He will never take us to hell, but he will punish us on this world. Okay? Just the same way our parents handled us when we sinned against them. Okay? Because the Bible says in Hebrews, Hebrews, <coughs> Hebrews 12, the Bible says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. If God loves you, he will chastise you. And scourge every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Every parent will beat his child or a child when something is done wrong, isn't it? So the, that is the same way God handles our situation. That we are saved by faith alone through Christ Jesus. We are going to heaven. But the truth is that as long as we are still living in this body, we will find ourselves committing sin. Once we do that, we have a father who will chastise us. He can punish us by bringing sin sickness upon us, trouble upon us, but he will never take us to hell. So he says, but if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons? True sons of God are beaten by him when they sin. Bastards are not his sons. So he has no business chastising them every day. But if you believe today and become the son of God, God will introduce you to a punishment system whereby if you sin, you make a small sin, small punishment. A big sin, big punishment. David committed sin by taking somebody's wife, okay? Then killing the husband. So he committed adultery and uh, murder. David is in heaven today. Why? Because David just believed God and then he went to heaven. But God punished him while he was still on earth here because of his sin. And many, many examples of people who did the same. So what is this saying? Saying salvation is permanent. You get saved today, you remain saved forever. You sin against God, God will chastise you. All right? Do you have any questions so far? Is there anything that you feel you have not understood? You have understood everything. So if you are to go to, a, to your church next Sunday and you hear a pastor preaching saying that if you don't sm stop smoking, you will go to hell. If you don't stop smoking, you will go to hell. Will that be true or false? It will be false, isn't it? What if he says, hey, if you, if you, if you don't repent of your sins, you will go to hell. Will it be true or false? It will be false, isn't it? Because the only thing that we are supposed to do to go to heaven is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And once we believe in Him, we are given everlasting life. Now, the ball is coming back to your court. I've given you the understanding of the gospel. I have shown you that it's only Jesus Christ who saves. By Him dying on the cross, He paid all your debts, my debts, and the debts of the whole world. What you are only required to do is to believe in Him. Are you willing to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this moment so that He saves you? Okay. Romans proves unto us that you have to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation because that then will prove that you have the faith of Jesus Christ in your heart 
Romans 3 10 Romans uh, 10 I mean Romans 10 <coughs> Romans 10 13 the Bible says for uh, for whosoever whosoever means anyone here isn't it for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved so you have to call on the Lord Jesus Christ to save you because he's the one who has the power to save you from the powers of going to hell right how, how do you do that the Bible says if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus so you have to confess that Jesus is Lord remember you are not making Jesus your Lord you are confessing the Lord okay and shall believe that and shall believe in the inner heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved so you have to believe in the testimony of Jesus death burial and resurrection and that he confess with your mouth that he is Lord and the Bible says when you do that you shall be saved Verse 10 it says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So when you call on Jesus, you are approving the faith in your heart that you believe is the only one who can save you. Not your church, not your past, not your parents, not anything. Okay? Then he says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Once you believe in Jesus Christ and you call on his name, you are a hundred percent sure when you die, you'll go to heaven. And you know, you do it today, you'll not be doing it every day. You are only born again once. It's not born again, born again, born again. What happens to a Christian is he can backslide but still save. Okay? So if you're ready to call on the name of the Lord, I'm willing to help you call on his name. But what is saving you is your faith. And what is your faith? That Jesus is the only one who died for my sins. My works cannot save me. Commandments cannot save me. Anything besides uh, believing in Jesus Christ cannot save me. Okay? So bow down your head and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, am I am a sinner. Please forgive me, Please forgive me of all my sins. Okay. I, believe that I believe that you died, you died and, rose again and rose again because of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me in Jesus' name. I am saved. Amen. So now you can give me your two names. <laughs> the first one was? Benedict. The second one? Kaiga. I? Kaiga. Kaiga. Okay, so Benedict, normally after we've done this, we have an invitation for you to our church. And Benedict, even as I live, I want to leave you a challenge. Ask yourself, you've been going to PAG church for all these years, but still you are not even sure that when you die you'll go to heaven. Jesus said, if the blind lead the blind, they shall all fall into a ditch. So, you can guess what you can speak about your church. That yes, it's a good church in terms of assembling, but when it comes to matters gospel, they don't know what one has to do to go to heaven. So, if I was you, I would have said, this is not a safe place for me with matters going to heaven. Therefore, if that be you, you wish to join a church that has people that know what to do to go to heaven, a pastor who knows what to do to go to heaven, because you can be sure if the pastor and the people in that church know what to do to go to heaven, they will also be right on preaching the gospel and the doctrines of the Bible. So I want to welcome you to our church. The name of our church is called Faithful Word Christ Baptist Church. Baptist Church. These are my names, Pastor Paul Weringa. And this is my number. So we are at close to New Junior Campus Academy behind Naivas. Difficult to Kwandege, those areas. The best you can do, you can just let me know that you are coming and we will welcome you. Please be our visitor one of these fine Sundays. Just purpose and come, don't fear anything, just come, let me know that you want to come. You can flash me, you can SMS me, and I can organize to have someone pick you so that you come to church and hear one of our services, be a partake of one of our services, and after that you can choose to come and come and come and come again, right? Otherwise, God bless you. This booklet is just the book of John and Romans. We just extracted from this Bible. So you can be reading and reading and see exactly what I told you so that you understand more and so that tomorrow you can help your friends and your people never to go to hell so that they get saved and go to heaven. Okay? God bless you so much. Thank you so much for opening the gate. Asante sana. Okay. Hey.